Let's talk about how to practice music effectively. Here's my roundup of the most important things that you can do to get more out of your practice time. Hi, I'm Mark Morley Fletcher from Play in the Zone. I bring you regular tips on how to improve much faster as a musician and how to enjoy your music more by developing your mindset and your mental skills. There's no avoiding the need to practice. If you want to make steady progress as a musician, then you have to put the hours in. But not all practice is created equal. If you're really effective with your practice, then you can make more progress in less time. In this video, I'm going to go over five common mistakes I see musicians make that can significantly reduce how effective their practice is. Luckily, if you realize that you're making one or more of these mistakes, they're not particularly hard to correct. So you can be on your way to being much more effective with your practice in no time at all. And while you're watching, make sure to let me know if you're making any of these mistakes down in the comments. And the first big mistake is not having a clear goal in mind of exactly what you want, because all the work that you do is definitely going to change your playing in some way. It just might not be moving it in a direction that is at all where you want to go. And if you're not clear on where you're going, exactly what you're doing while you're practicing, then there's no particular surprise if you just don't move in that way that's that's really going to leave you sitting up and saying, oh yeah, okay, now I'm really happy with what I'm doing. I can see I'm making progress. And it kind of feels like we should know what's going on here, but usually it's very vague. We have a very fuzzy idea in our minds of where we're going, if we have anything at all. And it may just be that you find yourself practicing stuff for the sake of it. So if you really want to be satisfied with where you're going, you need to get much clearer about what it is that you want. And there are two good ways to do this. See whichever one of them works for you. The first is, as I've been saying, do you have a clear idea of where it is you want to get to? Maybe that's you leading your own band, recording an album, just playing for a couple of friends. There's one particular piece you want to play, or maybe there's a whole genre you want to get really good at. It doesn't matter what it is, but can you get clear on what you want and then work out, well, what is it that I need to do to get there? Or the other way that you can go about it is looking at your playing as it is now and say, what do I want to be better about my playing? What specifically would I really like to improve? So either of those ways can work, starting from the positive, this is where I want to get to, or from a more negative thing, this is what I would like to improve about my playing, this is what I'm not completely happy with now. But either way, try and get really clear about what it is that you're trying to change, and that will make you much more effective with how you actually change that. And the second mistake is having too many different goals at once. Because there's always lots of things to improve in music, lots of things that we want to do. But it's not helpful if you're constantly doing a hundred different things that are always pulling you in lots of different directions. If you imagine how far you're going to go, every little practice session moves you a little bit along the way. But if each one is moving you completely different directions, you don't go very far in any one of them. But when you've got one or two big goals, and so every little practice session you do, let's pick one goal here, is moving you in that direction that you need to go to reach that goal. Okay, there's no difference with each little practice session on that other example where you've got so many different goals, but over time, each one of those is reinforcing the other. It's moving you further along that path. They're completely aligned, just going up and up and up in the same direction, and you get this inexorable progress happening. So not only is that really satisfying and motivating, because you can really see practice uh, progress happening, rather than all those little individual movements in different directions, it's really hard to see what's going on, but actually they, they tend to reinforce each other. So even if you do have hundreds of goals that you're going to address at different times, you will get better results from really being focused on one or two of them for a bit, making big progress, 
and then moving on to other goals, making big progress there, then yet more goals, again, big progress, rather than trying to do everything all at the same time. And the third mistake I see musicians making that stops their practice being as effective as it could be is practicing much too large pieces of whatever it is that they're working on. Because at any one time, there are going to be a few sections of whatever it is that you're practicing that are the bits that are holding you back, that are the bits that you're really struggling with. It may be two or three specific bars within a much longer piece. It may be one particular aspect of some theory that you're grappling with or some technique. But every time we just sit down and throw ourselves into practicing the whole thing again, there's only those little bits of it that are the things that are really needing our work, that we really need to work on. And so a lot of our time goes into things that we can already do, things that were already fine. If you're playing this piece over and over and over again, and there's only three parts of it that are really the sticking points, then how much of your time is going over bits that you already know how to do, which you know is not really getting you anywhere? You'd be much better off focusing specifically on those three short sections. And, and even more importantly than that, this is all time when you're potentially losing focus, you're losing concentration because you can't keep it ramped up to the maximum the whole time. So every time you're doing much more than you need to, you're blunting your concentration, that laser focus, when you do get to those bits that are really important for you to improve. So when you focus in much more tightly on the specific things that are holding you back right now, then you're going to get much faster progress on correcting them. And that's when you go back. Then you look at the whole piece again, that whole bit of theory, whatever it is, and you see what's changed. See, have I fixed those points that were holding me back? Maybe, maybe not. But if so, where are the new sticking points? Where are the new things where I really need to put in work and then dive back in to the details and just focus on that tiny bit again and repeat the process? And the fourth mistake I see people making is practicing things too fast, at too fast a tempo. Because for you to change your playing, you need to get a good number of perfect repetitions in, laying down new pathways in your brain that you know, you've strengthened for exactly the right way to do things. And it can seem you know, more fun. It can seem like you're more advanced when you practice things really quickly. But if you're not getting them perfectly, then you're not actually helping yourself. So the much more effective thing to do, give you much faster progress in the long run, is to take the time to slow down and to really get it right. Those slow, perfect repetitions, staying really nice and relaxed in your muscles, really nice, relaxed in your thinking, creating the exact conditions that you want to be able to reproduce again when you perform, when you play, whatever it is. Just take the time to do it more slowly. And the fifth mistake that I see people making is not being focused enough, not being concentrated enough when they practice. It's really not going to do you much good practicing when you're zoned out. So keep practice sessions reasonably short. If you want to practice for a long time, schedule in small breaks, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, whatever, to just let your mind relax, refresh, and you can come back with extra focus. Or if you're just really not feeling focused at all, you're feeling completely zoned out on a particular day, make your practice session shorter or leave it for another time or have a break beforehand or whatever. But you're not anywhere near your most effective if you're unable to concentrate. So really make sure that you are switched on and focused when you are practicing. Allow yourself to relax when you're not and don't force yourself to keep going if you can tell that your focus has gone. So just to quickly summarize those tips for effective practice again, you want to have a clear goal while you practice. You don't want to have too many goals at once. You want to focus ruthlessly on the parts that are the real sticking points. You want to slow down when you practice 
be fine practicing slowly. And you want to make sure you maintain your concentration. There's no point practicing if you're you know, losing your concentration. Now, I definitely recommend checking out my video on how to get into the zone when you practice next. And if you'd like the special practice and performance tips that I only share with subscribers, then head on over to playinthezone.com and sign up for the emails. They're free. I've been Mark Morley-Fletcher. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.